Good evening, folks. It's Ned Kelly here, Ned Kelly Ireland. Uh, those of you from YouTube and know me as Ned Kelly Ireland. Those of you from TikTok, which I'm not really on that much, um, might know me better as Paddy Goes to Hollyhead. <laughs> That's a wonderful name, uh, and I didn't come up with it actually. That name I um, took from a band that used to play in London back in the 1990s. Um, it's basically a rip-off of Frankie Goes to Hollywood, um, but I think it works well. It's a great name. Um, I just want to give you a quick update on what I'm doing for those of you who follow me on YouTube. Uh, I know I haven't posted a video in quite a long time. I've been doing the UK since last Christmas. Uh, and a little bit of continental work and I'm actually doing UK full time now. I haven't really to be honest with you had the interest in making videos um, and it's just life gets in the way sometimes and that's one of the reasons why I would never take Patreon and I would never ask people to uh, donate money to my channel um, because I would feel obliged then that I had to produce material and I don't want to be in that situation because I prefer it becomes naturally. Uh, I did a video there uh, a number of years ago um, called Ireland a Trucking History. Um, and in, in that video, I featured a number of uh, our former colleagues, um, which are probably uncles and grandfathers and fathers of yours now, um, who have passed away uh, over the years. And I think it's time that I did an update on that, um, except it won't be like Ireland specific. Um, in other words, I know we have some guys, um, friends and followers in the UK and in Canada and in other parts of the world, uh, mostly English speaking countries, obviously. Um, so what I'd like to do is I'd like to put a bit of a video together to honour those who we, we have lost, honour truck drivers that we have lost um, last month, last year, two years ago. If you have a family member or a good friend of yours uh, that was a truck driver and that has passed away. Um, it doesn't matter if it was 10 years ago uh, or if it was last year or whatever. I know there's quite a few um, people that will be sad this Christmas because uh, there's an empty seat at the table. So I'd like to honour those people. Um, I would ask you if, if you are interested in, in posting uh, or having uh, your loved one um, remembered, can you please send me a couple of pictures um, and just write a little piece about the person. They were whatever their interests were. They worked for this company or that company and their favorite things they like to do. Not not a big, uh, a big page, but just a couple of lines so we can, you know, put them up there. And when they're up there, they'll be there forever, you know, and you can look back at it and say, oh, there's my dad or there's my uncle or there's my brother. You know, there's a lot of people who have died in the last couple of years and not all of them are old people you know a lot of them are young people uh, John Power is just one that comes to mind and Sean Hanley from my own area um, are two of them but there are others um, JD there are others that I don't even know so if you're interested in doing that whether you be from the UK from America whatever please just send me a picture of them and send me a couple of lines about them um, if you can, you can send it to nedkellyireland at mail.com. You can send it to me on Facebook, um, Ned Kelly Ireland on Facebook. Uh, also to Aidan Kelly if you want. And if you prefer, just to send it send to the email address or to Facebook. If you're having difficulty, please let me know. Um, it's Paddy Goes to Hollyhead on TikTok. Um, I just thought it'd be nice because, you know, Christmas is a time of the year where everyone gets really stressed beforehand. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of people who don't enjoy Christmas. I'm actually one of those people who wouldn't be a great fan of Christmas. Uh, and I know it's a sad time for a lot of people. And I'm not make, I don't want this to turn into a kind of a dreary sort of a situation. But it'd be nice to remember them and nice to honour them. And especially the ones who are gone. And this is their first, you know, this is their first year not sitting at the Christmas table. If you'd like to do that, if you'd like, if you're interested, please send me the pictures and send me a little piece, a couple of lines about that person and I will do my best to get them together uh, before Christmas. I hope you don't think this is a mad idea. I just think it'd be nice. You know, I used to, as anyone who's seen my videos, stop at roadsides and I would look at headstones of people who died on the road. And I just think it's nice to remember people, you know? It's nice to remember people. Anyway, folks, Take care and I'll talk to you soon.
Do not mind anything that anyone tells you about anyone else. Judge everyone and everything for yourself. Good morning. How are we all doing? Long time no speak and all that. Sorry, I'm a little bit scruffy this morning. I decided over the weekend, I said it's been a while since I've, since I've done a video. Um, and even though it's not all that interesting, um, I said that I would try and do one this week. Um, I've been, as you probably know, I've been freelancing since since um, since last December, and I've re recently started doing a little bit of work for a company based in um, Cross McGlen in the north of Ireland, which is just across the border from the south. Um, and I am just going over and back to the UK. I did one European trip out, out to Boulogne. Um, but other than that, I've just been going over and back to the UK. Um, and I didn't think it was anything particularly worth filming. Um, but I suppose you just never know until you start, you know. So uh, I decided I would do it this week. And to, just to see, trying to get my levels right. Sorry if my volume was a bit low there. Um, I'm experimenting with, with with my headset. I know there's this thing you can get. A lot of people are using them now. Um, this clip-on microphone thing, which is a brilliant job altogether because there's no leads and no wires. And you can actually walk outside the truck uh, within 100 yards and you can still hear it. So they're brilliant. But they're 400 quid and it's a lot of money. And my employment um, at the moment is not regular enough to justify it you know what I mean I'm doing uh, three day weeks four day weeks depending you know on, on how quiet it is I'm basically doing um, a load of bread uh, glucose not glucose free it's um, what do they call that stuff I can't even remember it gluten free gluten free bread and that's what I've been doing for the last number of weeks but uh, you know, some weeks I don't get out, start until Wednesday, and I'm usually finished on Friday. So, like, I'm, get, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not a full week's work as such. It was at the start, and then it went quiet. So I'm just hoping I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang in here for a while. Uh, it's a decent company, and uh, I would have had uh, my eye on anything coming up with them over the last number of months. Um, and the reason why is because they. They, uh, they have livestock trailers as well, and that is my main sort of, um, my main aim really is to get back in on the livestock. Uh, but like with good companies like this, you can't just walk in off the street and say, here, I want a, I want a, I want a you know, job doing the livestock because they have, they have people more experienced than me ringing them. So I reckon that the best place for me to start is to go in there just to get your get your bum on the seat, as it were. And um, now, nothing might ever come up on the, on the cattle. It might never come up on the cattle. Um, but I'm in a better place here now. I'm better positioned here now, working for the company, doing fridge work. Um, so if something did come up, I'd have a... I'm not saying even if something did come up that I'd be given it. Um, but I'd probably be in a better position. So that's all, that's all I'm saying. Uh, we are going, I'm just going to check my cameras, we're going to uh, to Dublin now, but we have to go up through Cross McGlen, this village, and it's a really bad road all the way from here back out onto the main road in Dundalk, it's really, really bad, narrow road, um, as you'll see as we go down here. The surface on the road in around Cross McGlen as well is absolutely atrocious, uh, it's really, really bad. Now. There's also another issue here. We had, there's a funeral on in town, I was told. Uh, supposed to start at 11 o'clock, so I'm hoping that I'll, I'll not be disturbing anyone because that's the last thing I want to do. You can see all the cars in there now. Most people are already in the church, so that's why I waited the extra few seconds before I left the yard. You know, I'd normally leave about 11 o'clock, but I left it until 10 past. There's a hearse there, you can see it. Um, so quite a few people standing out around. You see this thing about these country villages that what happens in a country village when someone dies, everyone in the village goes to the funeral, you know? It 
So, this is Cross McGlen. It's in uh, South Armagh, for those of you who don't know. And South Armagh would be considered by the police anyway, in, in the PSNI or the Police Service of Northern Ireland. Uh, this would be considered bandit country. Not so much maybe now nowadays, but in years gone by, this would be considered a stronghold, of, a Republican stronghold. See the, the tricolour flying there in the local, uh, is it a GA club? GA club, yeah. Um, so that's about the size of it now. We're just going to head, as I said, down to, to Dublin. We have to have one stop on the way down to get diesel in Balbriggan. Um, I have just under three quarters. I need just to top it up. And I'm hoping now that I'm going to be out until Friday, at least, you know. Um, I, I obviously, as I said to the, to the, to the company boss, I said that I, I can't sustain uh, three-day weeks and four-day weeks, you know, for any, any, length, any, any period of time. But um, I'd like to stay here, you know. I'd like to remain here. And I'd like to work here. So I'll hang in there for the moment. I'll hang in there for the moment. I said, I, 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 I said I'd give it to the end of October. Uh, uh, but if, I, if it's still only three days, four days a week, I, I'll, I'll unfortunately um, have to consider moving on somewhere else. I don't want to do that. I don't want it. I'm very reluctant to do that because I like working here. But, like, unfortunately... Bills have to be paid, and everyone knows that the price of everything has gone through the bloody roof recently. So I can't be I can't afford to be coming home with half a week's wages, you know. And they know that, but like nothing they can do. If it's quiet, it's quiet, and there's nothing you can do. But anyway, we'll see how we go. See what I mean about this road. Like, when you meet a car on this road, one of you has to pull in. Now, I'm lucky enough that most of the cars that I've met will pull in. Like, I'm driving in the middle of the road now. You think, why don't you get over to your own side? Because there's nothing coming, that's why. If there's anything coming towards me, I slow down instantly. Oops, jeepers. It's some really, really nasty, nasty dips. Um, so you just have to take your time. It's not really designed for trucks, this road. Now, there's no low bridges or anything on it, but it's not really designed for trucks as such. But it's the quickest way for me to get out of here. And it's the way I come in and out from the south. So we're, we're going out on the 2.30 Irish Ferry sailing. Um, that'll leave us in Holly Head for 6 o'clock. And depending where I'm positioned on the boat, I should be out of Holly Head port by about 20 past 6. And I'm tipping in Leicester. Um, so I have to go out the M A55 onto the M56, onto the M6 southbound come off at Stoke onto the A50 and the A500, A50 and follow that road uh, for until I get to this place. Now it's, it's bloody awkward to get to because you have to go on to five or six different roads and load of roundabouts and through towns and stuff and it's, it's not easy to get to now. The last place we were chipping was much, much handier. It was a place called Redditch which is south of Birmingham, and all you had to do basically was go down into Birmingham, take the M5, and then go on to the M42, and it's the second exit off the M42. Um, once you come off the motorway, you were literally five minutes away from it. That was great. But this place, even though it's further north, you'd think it'd be closer, but it's actually not. It's really awkward to get to, really, really, really awkward. And I'm down for tipping tonight at 11 o'clock.
so it's 11 o'clock now so in 12 hours time I'm supposed to be back down a bay in Leicester with this load now I don't know what the prospects of that are because there's really nasty roadworks on the A55 uh, near Bangor really nasty roadworks and I lost a half an hour in it last week and I was the very first truck off the boat last week and I still lost a half an hour in that traffic so what I'm going to do later on this evening is I'm going to it's basically the outside it's a, it's a dual carriageway the outside lane is closed so what I'm going to do is I sat on the inside lane last week and a load of trucks went down on the outside lane a load of cars that, that arrived 10 minutes after me and they were long gone by the time I got to the top so what I'm going to do is as soon as I meet the tail end of that traffic jam I'm going to go out into the right hand lane and I'm going to block it and I'm going to block it from all the queue jumpers running down the, the closed lane and then barging their way in at the top I, that makes my fucking blood boil excuse my language um, I, it drives me insane when people do that and you'll have people that will say oh that's what you're supposed to do merge and turn merge and turn no what you're supposed to do if it says lane close is get out of that lane and get into the left lane people don't agree with me that's fine so we have uh, toddled our way down and we're just one junction away now from the place where we get our diesel um, I didn't realize that uh, companies in the north of Ireland and the UK are not allowed to put agricultural diesel in fridges which is absolutely flipping crazy they're not allowed to put agricultural diesel into a fridge nonsense so what we do instead then is I, I fill my fridge or the fridge uh, with diesel um, in the south on the way down to the ferry just gonna overtake this guy now an Italian here he's just going too slow oh it's not an Italian it's one of Sodar's S-O-D-O-R good company by all accounts I thought it was an Italian company, but it's actually not. Uh, yeah, so that's the, that's the way we, we walk around it. I fill with diesel in the fridge down in Dublin because in the south of Ireland you are allowed to use agricultural diesel in a fridge. Um, but not in the UK and not in the north. So if I got stopped by the customs in the UK I'd have to be able to produce receipts from where I got the diesel from. And uh, that's what I'm going to be able to do. You know, um, I don't know what that internal camera is looking like. I hope it's not too dark. So this is Junction 5, Rush. I'll go in here now and hopefully, hopefully, fingers crossed that the pumps are not blocked up. Sometimes drivers come in and they park on the pumps and they go and they have their lunch and they block the pumps I know this is a worldwide thing and I know that Trucker Ray has given out about it in America it happens a lot and Vernon has given out about it as well you come in to get diesel and you can't get near the pumps because some tow rag has left his lorry on the pumps and he's taking his 45 minute break while he's on the pumps so selfish There's a fast bike, a Hayabusa, I think, is it? It looks like one. Brand new, too. Yeah, so we'll go in here and get diesel. I have just a, just over a half a tank here, so I'm going to top that up. Um, and we should, we should be down in the port for one o'clock, which is an hour and a half before the boat sails. This is quite a popular spot, this, for um, trucks, trucks from both sides of the motorway use this, you see. 
It's not just southbound traffic, northbound traffic comes in here as well. Nobody on the pumps, thanks be to God. Oh, there is, there's one on it. There's one on it. Not so good because I really wanted to be on that side, but I'll get diesel on this one first anyway. He's not getting diesel either, is he? See, this is what I'm saying. It's so flicking annoying. People coming in here and they're parked on the pumps and they go and have the brake then. So I'm using this. This is a Shure uh, headset. It's actually a vocal, a vocal headset that I'm using. And it's connected to a Zoom H6, which is then connected to the media mod on the Hero 10. It's a kind of a funny roundabout way um, I will get a road a wireless mic I will get one but I need to get a couple of weeks of solid work behind me first because it's 400 euro and although they're great they're not cheap there's the rain now see that clown see that absolute moron there came was driving in lane number one and indicated from lane number one out into lane number two to sit in the middle lane like a fucking moron. And there he is there now, sitting in the middle lane. And I undertook him, went up the inside of him. And I'm only able to do 56, 57 miles an hour. And the clown is still sitting out in the middle lane on a three-lane motorway. Why did he move from lane one out into the middle lane? Absolutely no reason. He wasn't overtaking anybody. He's just a fucking Muppet. And I looked in, and he's not young either. You know, like if someone that just passed or tested that, you'd say, well, maybe they're a little bit confused. But for someone who's probably been driving 20, 30 years, just an absolute fucking clown. Yeah, the forecast is not great now for the rest of the day. The ship I'm going on, I think, um, is the Epsilon, uh, which used to do a little bit of the, the Sherberg route. But it's over and back now to uh, to Hollyhead. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Yeah, we'll just leave the cameras rolling after we run, we run into the port. I don't, I don't know what, if any of it, I can use for footage, but... I'll leave it rolling anyway. Like already this morning now, I was up out of my bed this morning at uh, 5.30. And I left my house at 6 a.m. And I drove to this company's yard, which is exactly 100 miles from my house to his yard. And that took me nearly two hours. It's 100 miles. Now, not kilometers. It's 100 miles from my house. I don't know what's going on down here now. Oh, it looks like they, they have the... Um Is the tunnel closed for some reason? I'm going to get out of here anyway. Fucking clown in the fucking... Fucking arsehole in that fucking polo. Fucking wanker. I'm not trying to ju jump the queue now or anything here. I'm just... 
There's too many cars that are in the left lane there that are actually going off in the city. It must have been closed for an over overheight vehicle or something. Give that man a thank you. Yeah, they must have had a closed for an overheight vehicle or something. Sometimes they do that, you know, if someone tries to come down to the tunnel and they're over height, they, ha they bring down the barriers and they stop them and they divert them off. Last couple of times I've come down through this, actually, there's been an issue of one description or another. Either the um, one lane is closed or some flipping thing. Still slow moving now today. Whatever's going on up there now, it's very slow. Same issue again in this tunnel. Like the amount of times I've come in, driven in through this tunnel and there's some wombat. Now we're not allowed in the second lane, so we have to stay to the inside lane. And the amount of times I've come into this tunnel doing 50 miles an hour, which is the speed limit, 80 kilometers, right? And some wombat in a car is sitting in front of me in, the, in, in our lane, doing 40 miles an hour. It fucking drive you mad. Sorry, I had to take a, a, a mouthful of my tea there. My throat is a bit dry. So yeah, that's the system I'm using for my for my audio. Now I know like it's as good as the road, but it's messy, you know, there's a lot of wires and stuff like that where the road is much, much neater. You just clip it on here or you clip it onto your shirt somewhere. And you can actually get out of your truck and walk around and you can it still pick up the audio, it's brilliant. But it's very dear, four hundred quid. And like when you're not producing videos you know, on a regular basis, like, that money has to come from somewhere. Like, I don't mind reinvesting, and I've done this all along. If I put out a video and maybe I get maybe, say I get 200 quid out of it or something like that, you know, if, if it gets a good number of views, and after maybe a month I might get 200 quid out of it or something like that, I would put that towards updating the equipment. Well, there's that. Um, but... I can't afford to be paying it out of my out of my out of my weekly wage at the moment because, as I said, I'm only get I'm only I'm only getting three days, four days a week for the last month, and that's not you know, there's no luxuries in, involved in that. You're just basically getting by, and that's all, you know. And just because you have 30 years done on the continent or 30 years driving trucks, doesn't mean that you're going to get a penny more than anybody that started last week. And that's one of the sad things about the, the trucking industry. <clears throat> loyalty and experience are not rewarded like they don't say oh, okay well I'm going to take on this driver here and because he has 30 years experience or 20 years experience I'm going to pay him you know more money than I'm going to pay a guy that started last week for the first time no your experience is worth nothing it's a benefit to your employer but you don't get nothing for it you know, if you're in any other industry and you're a, you're a senior person in a computer company or whatever, you command a better salary. See, as a truck driver, nothing. You get nothing. Nothing extra. All the years of experience that you're bringing to a company, that makes the job run smoother for them. And you don't get a single penny for it.
There must be a new. There must have been a new law invented that allows trucks to get into the. Uh, other lane there. Because as far as I know, we we're supposed to stay in the left-hand lane, but none of my business. If they want to go up and chance it, if they want to take a chance, it's up to themselves. To get caught, it's their own fault. Well, that wasn't too bad because we got straight out here now. And there's no argy bargy as there normally is because you have two lanes going into one lane here. Didn't do too bad, 25 past six. Not bad considering now, really.
fucking stupid cunt. A fucking dozy bastard, wouldn't you? Fucking know it's a fucking paddy. A fucking tick cunt sitting at the roundabout, nothing coming. And I'm looking up and down the fucking road like some kind of a fucking gum. Had to be a fucking paddy, lads. Hope this fucking thing is not open now. Uh, it says closed. Great. Happy days. Right, we can go on about our business now. Start eating the competition. Well, Don Boy is going fairly lively though. Right, we'll talk to you later. Well, the uh, the daylight's fading fast here, um, and also the the weather is getting a little bit soft. Uh, we're just along by Bangor here now, beautiful part of Wales. Um, obviously, on a nice sunny day, it's even nicer again. But you have beautiful beaches all the way along here. Be a lovely place to visit um, I'd say part of the North Wales Expressway there was no roadworks I mentioned earlier on if there was roadworks we'd get slowed down but thankfully there was no roadworks well there, there was roadworks but there wasn't down to one lane last week when I came out here they'd closed one lane and I was I lost about a half an hour in traffic Whereas today, now, I didn't lose anything at all. They have these average speed cameras, uh, 40 miles an hour. But the thing about it is, and I, I laughed at this before, you know, in the UK. You have these mutts. If there's a speed limit of 60 miles an hour, if there's a 60 mile an hour speed limit, they're doing 50. If there's a 50 mile an hour speed limit, they're doing 40. If there's a 40 mile an hour... It was a 40 mile an hour speed limit, like the one we just passed there. They're like, oh, sweet, sir. You know, you know the way the speed limit says 40 mile an hour? Well, we'd be better off going 35. Or maybe 30, play it on the safe side, you know. Fuck, I don't understand it at all. Like, if the speed limit's 40, it's 40, it's not 30. Do you know? I don't, don't understand it at all. Don't understand it. But, uh, yeah, so we're doing good. We're doing good. We're coming into a section here now that's a bit twisty-windy. I was going to take, overtake that van in front of me there, but there's not really much point because I'd have to be slowing down again in front of him. I don't know why he's, he's going so slow. It's, it says 30 miles an hour, but, like, that's only a guide, you know what I mean? They don't have any speed cameras on this, so there's never any any average speed cameras. It's just an advisory, I suppose, really, because it's, it is twisty and windy. So, But if we get out the far side and he's still crawling like he's crawling now, I'll drop him, you know? Like, there's no need to be going that slow in a van, you know what I mean? He's not going to turn it over. This is probably the most scenic part of Wales, I'd say. Well, definitely is, really. Oh, he's breaking. He nearly... He, oh, he nearly couped her. Whoa! He nearly couped her there, bud. You better slow down. Fuck's sake, like... I haven't really caught that many... I was the second last truck off the boat. So... All of the other ones are gone are gone ahead, but the way it usually works with me is I kind of I kind of track them down and take them one by one. By the time I get out to uh, the M6, 
I'll have taken more than I'd say and I'd say I'd take one or two on the big long hill we have to come to yet but uh, that's more like it there now that guy in the, in, in the Land Rover that's the way to do it get the fucking boot down and get on with it get the boot down and get on with it right I'll catch you later bye ciao I'll show you where I'm parked I'm parked here in a little a little town in Leicestershire and I parked here in this quite little industrial estate. Now, none of these cars are here at night time. Uh, really, really quiet road. And other trucks park here. Um, but I just came out, did my walk around checks this morning and look the way I found the door. Someone's, somebody's opened the door. Obviously, last night when I was asleep um, and didn't bother to close, I just opened it and then just pushed it. They obviously opened it, took a look in, realised there was nothing to steal and just pushed, pushed, it back like, pushed it back like that. Actually, that wasn't there. That was just left like that. So it just goes to show you, I didn't bother putting a lock on it because there's nothing in it, but it just goes to show you that it doesn't matter in the UK where you park. These are residents in here beside me. These are businesses. This is a really quiet little town in Leicestershire where I uh, delivered and it just goes to show you that you're, you're safe nowhere in the UK um, my diesel tanks the locks are on the diesel tanks um, and it's a grand little parking space but it just shows you as I said that you're not safe anywhere in England parking now I don't know at what stage during the night that uh, the vermin whoever was down. It's obviously, I, well, I, I'm, I'm not going to say who I think would do it because it's the same no matter where you go. It's the same type of vermin that do that. Um, I wouldn't be stupid enough if I had something in the back of that trailer to leave it without a lock on it because I don't trust anyone. And I know I'm long enough on the road now to know that you never leave your trailer or your truck unsecured. So at some stage during the night or the early hours, some vermin thought that they uh, here's a here's a nice load of stuff I can rob from a trailer, and they were obviously disappointed. Didn't bother closing the door after them. They just opened it up, had a quick look, and were gone. Uh, and only someone who was who had intentions to steal would do that. Nobody else would be do would do that out of curiosity. Oh, I wonder is that in the back of that? I'm not actually going to steal anything. I just want to see that in the back of it. A thief did that. And uh, luckily the thieves were disappointed on this occasion. You're not safe anywhere in England. You're just not safe anywhere. So, good morning from basically Soham. It's a bit of an eerie place for me to be, even though that Turner's is a regular place for a lot of Irish fridge companies to go. But because of the history of the place with that bastard Huntley and what he did to Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman, it's just, it's, it's not nice. Not nice. This is where I'm staying. This is where I stayed last night. Uh, believe it or not, and it's hard, to, it's hard to fathom that this place is on the snap parking. I don't know anyone who does the UK would have a, a snap. It's kind of like an account. And this, this is, uh, this is it. That's where I'm parked. It's basically a junkyard. Um, I got here last night about five o'clock. It's not too far. It's only about three miles, two miles or three miles from, from, uh, from Turner's. So this is where I'm at. And this is where I've stayed. Now, it's quiet. I'll give it that. Um, but for 18 or 19 pounds sterling or whatever they're charging for here, uh, they say that you have a um, toilet and showers and that. Um, I was in the toilet. I'm not going to go back in there again. I was in the toilet. There's no toilet paper in the, t in the, in the toilet and there's no soap in the dispenser for your hand uh, which is inexcusable and there's nobody here basically there's nobody here there's no one no no one on the desk 
as you can see, this place is just, I'm the only one here. So, would I recommend it? No, I wouldn't. I wouldn't recommend it. What I should have done is I should have stopped on the A14 in Cambridge Services on the way over here and I should have stayed there last night where I'd have a proper shower, proper toilet and proper facilities where you can get a cup of tea or something in the morning. There's nothing in this place at all and you can't even wash your hands because they don't provide soap. Uh, I had a quick look into the shower as well and to be honest with you I wouldn't put a dog in it. So these are the things you have to sort of learn as you go along but um, if I'm coming to Turner's and Soham again uh, I won't be coming here. There's no way. It's not a hope in hell. Like if they had a little you know, a little bit of soap in the dispenser. If the toilets were had proper toilet paper in them, like any other toilet should have, you're, pro you know, they're pro they're supposed to be providing a service. You're paying for a service, and all you're basically paying for is to park your truck in a junkyard because there's nothing else here. There's not even any, as I said, there's not even any toilet proper toilet facilities. The showers, I wouldn't put a dog in it. So yeah, overall disappointing, disappointing. So we're gonna head off now down to Turner's. Uh, hopefully this time, well, last time we were in there we didn't get loaded. There was a load cancelled or something on us, so I'm hoping when we get down there now that we're going to get loaded. Um, and we have a long drive ahead of us then, we have to go to Hollyhead I'd say more than likely with that trailer. And uh, we're turning, as far as I know we're turning. And, and heading back down to um, that place we were in before. Where we, Barden, where we tipped the bread. So that's it, uh, there's a code for the gate to get out. Um, I have it on my oak, so hopefully that'll work. But um, no, no, definitely not. If it was a tenner, if it was 10 sterling to park for the night, you'd probably say, well, feck it. It's better than parking on the side of the road, but there's not much in it now, might as well tell you. Right, we'll go on. Never to return again into this place anyway. An awful place. Potholes and everything in it. The state of it. Surprised the gate even works. So we're into Turner's here. Your destination is on the right. You see, you can't really go down any. F you can't really go down any further. Look at a seven and a half ton width limit there. So where are you going to get parked unless you go in there? You're not. That's why I had no choice really to go to the other place. Now I can go in. They're very nice in here now, I have to say, I was in here before a few times and I always found them very nice. They're very pleasant and very helpful and not a bit ignorant or anything, you know. They're, they're nice people in here now, they are, genuinely. And it's not often you can say that about places you go to, especially these big distribution centres, but these actually are nice, they're actually dead on. That's obviously a big boss there, PD1, big 740 BMW. 
It's not driving a lorry anyway, I can tell you that. A14 here and there's a um, a roadwork section that goes on for about two or three miles I don't think it's too long I'm not sure but uh, it gets quite slow trucks are only allowed in lane number one and further on down on the A14 on the way towards the M6 there's a section where trucks are not allowed to overtake um, between 6 a.m. and 8 p.m. or something I think it is so we're just going by Newmarket there so if you're from Newmarket hello a lot of container traffic comes across the A14 you can see both sides of the road um, going to Felixstowe and the docks and things like that I always said that I'll never do containers but I'm starting to come around to that way of thinking and I'll tell you why. Um, all you do with a container is open and close the back doors, there's no stripping curtains, there's no strapping down loads with containers. All you do is open and close the back doors and box gets lifted off, box gets lifted on and a lot of the time you have the same skelly trailer with you unless you're dropping and picking of course um, yeah I said I'd never do it but with the um, which I think is arthritis in my left shoulder my days of pulling curtains and strapping down loads are gone because it aggravates my shoulder to the extent where I can't sleep on it so I have to stay sleeping on my right side and if I turn over to my left side I'm woken by the pain of it which is not ideal oh look at all these cops coming must be some dignitary or something they're all unmarked jokes So you'd never know they were cops. And a van as well at the back of it. I'd say you get some fright now if you were acting a maggot and some fella in a white van came up, plain white van came up with the blue lights flashing, you wouldn't be long about getting a fright. Just as a matter of interest, how many of you agree with me that Birmingham is the worst place in the whole of the UK to drive? See all these Q-hopping scumbags as well, these fucking rats. They don't know what fucking lane to be in. They're jumping from one lane to the other lane to the other lane. Then look at this fucking prick. Fuck off, you fucking wanker. You fucking asshole. You see what I mean? 
fucking wanker just stick the fucking nose out in front of you and expect you to stop a, a fully freighted fucking articulated truck in 0.4 seconds I want to come I'm money I'm money me indicator I put my indicator please why do you do why don't you why don't you stop to let me out I put my indicator and I move at the same time an indicator is a request it's not a fucking statement and don't stick your nose out underneath me or I'll fucking well cut it off why 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 want you blind blow, blowing horn I put the indicator you must read the rule of the road I'm allowed I am allowed to come to this lane when I put the indicator I am allowed you can't stop me you are racist you are a racist truck driver <laughs>